What is going on guys, my name is Elite, this is my new FIFA channel, every single video uploaded to this channel will be FIFA related. Today I'm going to be bringing you a new bidding method that can make you tons of coins really quickly, but that does have a big impact on the market which we mentioned in the last episode, we're witnessing it right now. How to trade with some of the gold cards that are going to get ones to watch is how you can capitalize on that, when you should buy, when you should sell. And Sander Arnold for 30,000 coins, and just in the next day, he's already 37,000 coins, which I've got 19 of his cards. The very first week of FIFA always creates more of a trading environment than any other time of the year. It's absolutely awesome and so fun for everybody. Building their club up from the ground up. Grinding their asses off to make those first few thousand coins. It's great to see. Now, there will be some people taking shortcuts, like buying FIFA points or making several accounts to farm coins or cheating or etc., and even some of your favorite traders might not be fully transparent with how they got all their coins at the beginning of the year. Like, I went offline for a few hours and did some trading. You shouldn't expect any of that from me. I'll not only be 100% transparent about where all my coins are coming from, but I'll be documenting it, teaching you, right here on the Trading to Glory, both live streamed on Twitch and cut up in pieces for you guys to watch in review on YouTube, which you're watching the very first episode right now. Ones to watch trading, it's probably something you've heard of every single year, and maybe you've never attempted it, or maybe you made bank with me last year. Either way, you guys can use this guide for yourself when you're investing during week one and week two of FIFA 21, and it's not too early to start prepping. What's going on guys, and welcome to the video. My name is Sean, aka Elite. And as you guys saw by the little intro I put together, we are obviously doing our ultimate ones to watch trading guide today. Now, I've done this in the past couple of years, and this is the first time I've categorized it under Trading to Glory, because normally I start my Trading to Glory series on the first day of Web App when we start actually making coins. Now, this is going to carry on to the first day of Web App when we actually start making coins, but I feel like for the guys that only watch my channel for the Trading to Glory series, you're missing out on one of the most important concepts of the year, which is ones to watch trading. Ones to watch trading is very important because one, it's the first promo of the year, but two, because the concept of out of pack investing that you learn from ones to watch is bigger than ones to watch itself. It's one of the most important concepts to learn throughout FIFA entirely. It's one of the best coin making methods out of pack investing is. So we're gonna be talking about that today. We're gonna to categorize it un under understanding the supply, understanding the demand, and before that, we're gonna get into the ones to watch cards that are probably going to be in the game. And we're gonna be going through the list that I put together and the graphic I put together for ones to watch cards so that you guys can get not only a visualization of the cards to be expected, but also farther into that more in-depth on the cards that we can make profit off of. So let's first talk about FIFA 20. Learn from what we saw at the beginning of this game to use at the beginning of FIFA 21. Where is the risk, if any, and where is the most coins to be made? So you can see a list of some of the ones to watch cards on your screen right now. Through these cards, which got dropped on the first Friday of the full release of the game, these cards, are the first special cards in the game other than Team of the Week. Which means that the cards that get ones to watch go out of packs for that week. So the coins are to be made in the gold cards. One ones to watch card was Lucas Hernandez. This card, not very relevant at this point in the game. He was injured most of the year, which means that he didn't get any Team of the Season cards, and a lot of people have ultimately forgotten about him. But he was one of the most important cards at the beginning of FIFA 20. Lucas Hernandez, only 20,000 coins now. Not very many people using him in their squads anymore, that's for sure. A pretty irrelevant card now, but at the beginning of the year, definitely not the case. We're gonna pull up some graphs so you can look at what he did at the beginning of the year. So the first day that Footbin started detecting prices in FIFA 20 
was September 19th, which was the first day of web app release for FIFA 20. It might have been the second day. Either way, very early on. And you can see on Xbox and on PlayStation, he was 15,000 to 17,000 coins respect, uh, respectively. So with those prices in mind, you can see how an 84 rated center back card from France with three very good stats uh, for defense, which is high pace at 81, good defense at 83, and great physicality for such a uh, good link card, Bayern in France at 82. It is a very good card. It's only 15,000 coins on Xbox. It's quite cheap. You can see it just rose the whole time on the length that this graph goes to, which is about October 10th. It starts to dip on about October 8th, 9th, and 10th, but it only rises for the first three weeks of the game. Now, take a look at the second graph. That's where it peaked. On October 4th or 5th is where it peaked. He went from 15,000 coins on Xbox and 17,000 coins on PlayStation all the way up to 73,000 on Xbox and 83,000 on PlayStation, which means that if you had 45,000 coins on Xbox and you bought three Lucas Hernandez for 15K each on Xbox on the first day, you turned that 45,000 coins into a 60, or it would have been a, yeah, just about a 60K profit per card almost, 180,000 coin profit, and then ultimately 200 and 10,000 coins total, which is a lot of profit that early in the game. From 45k to about 210,000 coins, that's a lot of profit and a lot of coins that you can reinvest into the market. But do we really want to wait that long? And will we have 45,000 coins to spend on the first day? The concept is easy. The execution is a little bit more difficult. I'll be dropping a little bit more guides in the next couple of days or weeks on how to get from zero to 100,000 coins to start the game in the first few hours so that we have those coins to invest in cards like this. But before we do that, I want to talk about why this card went up in price. So the first thing we talk about is buying power. You can see 15,000 coins. It's pretty cheap. But why was it that cheap? It's because not very many people had very many coins to spend on a card like Lucas Hernandez. So if not anybody has coins to spend on the card, that means that he's not going to be very expensive. Nobody can buy him. The price is going to be cheap. It's similar to some other cards that you see. Even if they're super, super rare, if nobody has the coins to buy them, they're not going to be extinct. They're not going to be super expensive. So that's the concept with this card as it is with Pele or Ronaldinho at the beginning of the game. Now, Ronaldinho and Pele aren't going to be 15,000 coins, don't get me wrong, but they're going to follow that same trend at the beginning of the year where nobody can buy them, and then as people gradually get more coins and can afford them, they go up in price. But this card is special. It went up a lot. I mean, how much is that? Like, times five of his original price? That is ridiculous. That's because one, he was meta. People liked this card. They wanted him for weekend league. And two, he was a once to watch card. This guy went and transferred to Bayern from Atletico, I believe it was last year. And that big transfer was for sure gonna make it in. He was definitely gonna be a once to watch card. So with that being said, let's talk about the cards that could potentially get once to watch cards this year so that we know what we wanna buy on that first day. Who's gonna be that card this year? Because we're not gonna know until that Friday that they release ones to watch, who's actually in ones to watch. They don't release that early. You don't know until the day of. So you gotta plan ahead. You gotta invest in the card that you know is gonna get a ones to watch card. So let's take a look at the cards that could potentially be on that list. The only ones to watch card that's guaranteed by EA is Timo Werner to Chelsea. Now his rating doesn't necessarily need to be 86, although that is my prediction for him. And the graphic I've put together does include somewhat the predictions of the statistics I expect on each of these cards. However, it's not guaranteed by any means. 
And the only card that's even guaranteed is Timo Werner up in the top left. His card, however, is going to need more than 15,000 coins to pick up at the beginning of FIFA 21 as opposed to Lucas Hernandez at the beginning of FIFA 20. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. The people who pack Werner are probably going to be smart enough to keep him for at least a couple days while he goes up in price. Now the people that don't are definitely going to be losing out on a lot of coins that they could have potentially had if they held that card a little bit longer. Hopefully that'll be you guys that hold the cards. But if you've got that regular gold Timo Werner on the first day, let's say he's about 50 to 60,000 coins on day one, he's going to continue to go up, especially given the fact that now he's in the Premier League, so that adds some coins to him. He's German for those links, so that adds some coins to him, and he's one of the best, most meta strikers in the past couple of years other than that skill moves aspect of him. But at the beginning of the year, ridiculous card. One of the best in the game, and he's going to have a price tag to him. But the fact that he goes out of packs and the supply is cut off is going to make that card fly like none other. Only problem with the investment on this card is the fact that everybody knows he's getting a ones to watch card. Which means that if you're getting in on him, you're getting in on a card that's going to be bought by a lot of other investors with the same idea. The profit's still going to be there. You can't go wrong. There's literally no risk if you buy a Timo Werner in the first couple of hours or the first two days and hold him for a week or two. There's literally no risk. You will make profit. You will at least double your coins. But there could be other cards with more profit on the cards, at least in terms of percentages. So if you pick up a card for 2,000 coins and they end up going to 9,000 coins, that's actually a lot better bang for your buck instead of picking up a Timo Werner for 50k and selling him for 100, right? You could instead pick up like 30 or 25 of those cards for 2,000 uh, two coins and then sell them for 9k each and you'll actually make a ton more profit. So think about it that way. You've got Sané there, who's very similar to Werner in terms of that going to be a very expensive card at the beginning of the game. But I think Sané is also going to be one of the most guaranteed cards in ones to watch. The only problem is there are a lot to choose from in this ones to watch. And the ones that didn't make my list on the predictions and the fact that the transfer window isn't even closed yet could definitely skew this 23 cards that I've put together here. But you've got the likes of Parejo, who's not very meta, but he is going to turn into SBC fodder pretty soon into the game. Some high rated SBCs possibly a couple weeks in and him being out of packs, it's going to make so that he's going to be one of the more expensive 87 rated SBC cards. And same for David Silva. But I definitely wouldn't go for those kind of cards. I want to get a card that's meta. A card that I'm really trying to use in weekend leagues soon. Think like a foot champions player. Who do you want to use in the first couple weeks? You don't want to use Parejo. You want to use Werner or Sané. And if you've got a starter team, who are you looking at in this team? You're looking at the likes of Nathan Ake down there at center back. He can, be, he can be a lot more compared to that Lucas Hernandez. Now, Lucas Hernandez had great links, and so does Nathan Ake. He's Dutch, and he's at Manchester City in the Premier League. On top of that, he's going to be like 81 or 82 rated. Who was another card of about that same price and rating at the beginning of the year? It was Joe Gomez at 80 rated at Liverpool. He was English, Liverpool, center back, had some pretty good stats to go along with him. Ake, very similar card this year. So, he's going to have that same demand that Joe Gomez had at the beginning of FIFA 20. But on top of that, take the supply away. That's how he's going to go up in price. Nathan Ake, for me, is probably going to be one of the most likely candidates to getting a ones to watch card. Because I think he was the biggest transfer that went to Manchester City this year. In the summer transfer window. Now, you could argue that Ferran Torres might have been a little bit bigger of a transfer, but he's going to be a much lower rated card, somewhere between the likes of 77 and 79 rated, maybe 80 rated, but he won't be up to 81 or 82 rated like Nathan Ake, and he definitely won't be as meta and great for a starter team at the beginning of the year. Take a look at Hakimi. Not the greatest links, but he is still a very good card there, and he is at Inter Milan, which gets a lot of links. Vertonghen, not so much in terms of meta, but Allen, he's Brazilian, he's now in the Premier League at Everton, he is going to get a slight downgrade, which might not even be a bad thing, could make him a little bit more affordable for you on the first day of FIFA. 
75 pace, 71 shooting, 77 passing, 83 dribbling, 85 defense, and 84 physicality, along with the fact that he's historically been 4-star, four 4-star. Four Makes him one of the more meta starter team cards in the game. He won't be too low rated or too cheap, but I think he'll be a great investment. The only problem with this, again, guys, is the fact that not all of these will make it into the team. And if you take a look at the other Chelsea cards, like Zayek, I mean, who are they going to choose? Again, historically, they've only put a maximum of two players from the same club in the same uh, team in the ones to watch. There's never been more than two. So with Chelsea having so many transfers, Werner, Zayek, Havers, Chilwell, Thiago Silva, uh, Saar, etc., they could choose anybody. And they might not choose more than two. So with Werner being guaranteed... I'd say Zayek's a little bit risky, even though he'll be the highest rated on Chelsea. And since Havertz came in a little bit later, and he's also German, I don't know if they'll make both of the Chelsea OTWs German transfers, especially with Werner already in there. You look on the right side of the screen, you've got the likes of Matuidi, who's French, but not in a great league anymore. Uh, to MLS, he's not going to have a lot of links there. Pjanic, he's okay at the beginning of the game. 86 rated is going to make him a little bit harder to pack. But to his right, I think there's an even better investment. We're thinking Premier League is going to be the, the league again, especially at the beginning of the year. Rodrigo to Leeds, he's not the greatest player in real life, but he's not projected to get a downgrade yet by EA either, which is going to keep him at 83 rated. And in FIFA, he's always pretty good. And he's got the stats to back it up. So Rodrigo could be a great card to pick up at the beginning of the year for ones to watch. Crusa, not that great. OC Men, he could be okay. Pedro, Robin, not too sure about them even making it into ones to watch. Robin coming back from retirement, I think would be a pretty cool concept to get into ones to watch. And Pedro going to Roma, he is 33 years old. So I don't know if that's going to be a ones to watch transfer, but I threw him in here anyway. You've got Weston McKinney and the likes of the cards that you're probably going to see in your guaranteed ones to watch pack at the bottom right of your screen. Caligari going to Augsburg. You've got Jonathan David, the Canadian, to LOSC Lille in the French League. Henrique's going to RB Leipzig and Trincao going to Barcelona. But now with the news that Messi is staying, I'm not sure how many upgrades that card's going to get because let's be real, if Lionel Messi's on the team, he's probably going to be starting. Here's the list of the cards that I put together that could get OTW, but didn't really make my list. I mean, starting up top, you've already got some big transfers. Havertz to Chelsea, Mounier to Dortmund, Bellingham to Dortmund, Simicas to Liverpool, could definitely get in, being Liverpool's pretty much only transfer so far in this window, as Thiago Alcantara hasn't been guaranteed yet. Uh, I decided to put Bellingham twice for some reason. And then Willian, Ferran Torres, Lalana to Brighton, Ajeti to Celtic, Cochrane to Villarreal, Veltman to Brighton, Ramsdale to Sheffield, Hoiberg to Tottenham, Hart to Tottenham, Susek to West Ham, uh, Jurgen Dam to Atlanta United, Lovren to Zenit, Schwallow the goalkeeper to Arthur Berlin, and the reason I didn't put a goalkeeper in this one is because we normally don't get goalkeeper OTWs, but hey, there's a first for everything, right? They could do it this year. Chilwell to Chelsea, Toko Akambi to Leon, Gabriel to Arsenal, I almost put in here. Uh, I almost regret not putting him in here. He's one of the more likely on that list to the right. Rani out of Dortmund. Uh, you got Cash, just went to Aston Villa. Thiago Silva to Chelsea. Doherty to Tottenham's a big one too. Castagne to Leicester City and James Rodriguez to Everton. On top of that, you've got the likes of Tonali to AC Milan and I'm sure a few others that I didn't even get on this list. But that's just to illustrate how many different cards could really get into this ones to watch. We've still got a couple more concepts to talk about in this video. One's gonna be opportunity cost. Two, I'm gonna spoon feed you some of my best picks for the OTW investing. And then we're gonna finish it off with what is the basic concept of trading with the actual ones to watch cards once those actually come out. But before we do get into that, guys, I just wanna ask you real quick to drop a like on the video and help the channel grow. If you guys drop a like on the video, it might not seem like a lot to you, but to the creator, it is big. And it really helps get the video going into people's recommended so the channel can grow. 
So if you guys could help me out, if I've helped you out at all by dropping a like on this video, it would mean an absolute ton to me. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and hop into my top five picks because who doesn't like to get spoon fed some trading tips every now and then? I know I like to get spoon fed trading tips. And so here are my top five tips for the ones to watch gold cards. One is gonna be Nathan Ake. I like Nathan Ake's card. He is one of the biggest defender transfers of the window, other than maybe Vertonghen and Hakimi. You've also got the likes of Mounier, Henriques to the Leipzig, but Nathan Ake, a big deal going from Bournemouth to Manchester City. With the lack of depth on Manchester City's defense recently, the likes of Fernandinho, who's historically been a CDM, has really needed to play there after their injuries, Mendy being inconsistent, Ake could see some time under Pep's system. That is going to really increase his chance of getting a ones to watch because ultimately he doesn't need to get an info. It doesn't matter how he performs. He just needs to get the ones to watch card. So I'm betting on the cards that I think are one, meta cards that are going to fit well in people's starter teams, and two, cards that are likely to get OTWs. The combination of those two aspects are gonna be the basis on what I choose for these cards the most. So that's my first pick. My second pick is gonna stay in the Premier League. Premier League is a big factor. If you have Premier League links, you're gonna be more expensive, and going out of packs is going to skyrocket your price even farther. And no matter what the meta is in FIFA 21, Allen's such a well-balanced card that he's going to fit it no matter what. He's normally got 4-star, four 4-star. Four Even if he goes to 3-star, 4-star, it'll be still pretty solid. And he's got all stats 71 and above, which is huge for the beginning of the game. On top of the fact that he gets great links, he's going to be one of the best investments in terms of the gold card version of the card. So not his OTW, you're going to be wanting to invest early on the gold cards, guys. My third pick is Van de Beek. Now, he's not quite as good as Allen in FIFA, but he's at Manchester United. And since he's at Manchester United, and he's only he's been the only big transfer for Man U so far since the Sancho move hasn't gone through and hopefully doesn't, but if that Sancho move doesn't go through, I can pretty much guarantee Van de Beek gets in ones to watch because for first of all, there's a lot of Manchester United fans that work for EA, all right? There are. And there's a lot of Manchester United fans in the community. So if Van de Beek doesn't get a ones to watch, then they're gonna sell less packs for people trying to pack Van de Beek. They're gonna get a lot of feedback, negative feedback if Van de Beek doesn't get in. So I think he's pretty much locked on to getting in ones to watch. And he's not a terrible card either. So I think he's a safe bet. My fourth card is OC Men. He was a big, big card in FIFA 20, and he had a big year in the French League. Now that he's going to Napoli, I don't care how much time he gets under Mertens and Insigne and all the attackers that they have at Napoli. It doesn't matter to me. It just matters that he gets in ones to watch, which I think he will due to the lack of big transfers that went to Serie A. I mean, that's one of the biggest reasons I even put Pedro in that ones to watch prediction, because there wasn't that many huge transfers that went to Serie A during this window. And OC Men was one of the biggest, and given that card is pretty meta, or at least it was this year, and he got a lot of player of the month in League One. I mean, he really is one to watch. So I think he'll get in. And my final card, I mean, it might be kind of obvious, but it really introduces us to a new concept here. Timo Werner. I mean, guys, he's guaranteed to get into ones to watch, so he will have extra investors. But let's use that to our advantage. Think about opportunity cost. You buy these cards in the first couple days, or even the first couple hours, if you're really grinding. And you gotta wait till they drop ones to watch to really capitalize on those profits, which is about a week and a half to two weeks, right? That's how long you gotta hold the card to really capitalize on those profits. So if you're spending all of your coins on ones to watch investing, then you're just sitting there and waiting, okay? Let's think about opportunity cost. First of all, you don't wanna put all of your coins into ones to watch investing. You only wanna put half of them, maybe a little over half at the time of the investing because you'll be able to build up those coins continuously with other sniping methods and trading methods but with this investing method you're guaranteed a lot of coins in return that are just going to build with the cards sitting on your transfer list it's easy coins timo Werner, on the other hand might not take as long for his card to go up in price because one everybody knows he gets an otw so more people will invest and you can just sell him before Ones to Watch even comes out because people are going to want to sell that card when the Ones to Watch comes out and try to sell him during that week. 
So just sell them the day before Ones to Watch comes out. That helps you on opportunity cost because you get the coins back in return earlier and you can use those coins elsewhere on other investing methods, which there will be plenty of on this channel by that time especially. So those are my five picks for the safest OTW investments thus far in the summer transfer window. If you've made it this far in the video, comment down below which card you want to see get a ones to watch the most. Now, it could be a transfer that's already happened, like the Nathan Ake. Just comment that down below. Or it could be a speculative transfer, like Jaden Sancho to Manchester United. Hopefully, I don't get too many comments of that, but I know I will. You can comment whatever, but I just want to appreciate you guys for making it this far, and I'll drop a love and a reply to each one of the comments that basically comment who you want to get in OTW the most. So go ahead and drop that down below. But the final thing of this video, before we end this longer trading guide, I mean, these ultimate trading guides have a lot of information. I can't just squeeze it into 15 minutes. I gotta make sure you guys understand every concept and hopefully I'm not wasting your time because hopefully we've gone through a lot of different things that you guys have learned and can use in this uh, beginning of FIFA 21. But once to watch cards are the pinnacle of selling into the hype. I mean, that is what the cards are made for. And if you guys don't know what selling in the hype means, that's our number one rule for guaranteeing profit when trading or investing, is selling into the hype. If you're picking up a card in anticipation for an event on that card being hyped up, you're gonna sell before that event, all right? Once to watch cards, events are whenever that player plays a match. So let's say that Nathan Ake is getting a ones to watch card, right? So that Nathan Ake ones to watch card is always gonna be most expensive at the beginning of the Manchester City matches. And if he does well in those matches, like scores two goals and keeps a clean sheet, he's probably gonna go up even higher in price because he's gonna get an inform. But let's say 95% of the time, that's not gonna happen. 95% of the time, the cards that play as OTWs aren't going to get a ones to watch that following Wednesday. So if he has a game where Manchester City win two to one, he didn't have a goal or an assist, he wasn't a standout player, but he didn't play bad, you're gonna pick him up after that game because he's not gonna get a team of the week. You're gonna pick him up right after because the people who bought him, hoping that he would have a great game just sold him. So you're going to buy him after that game. You hold him for six days. He gets hyped up for their next Saturday game, right? They're playing Manchester United and Derby. And on that Friday and Saturday morning, that card starts going up in price again because they're about to play. And if he does well, he's going to get an upgrade from whatever he is, 81 rated to 84 rated if he gets an inform. So people are starting to buy him, hoping he does well. You sell him then. You don't take the risk. You're not waiting for him to score two goals, all right? We're not putting our profits in the hands of Nathan Ake, all right? We're just gonna take the profit from the people who are buying into the hype instead of selling into the hype. So that's the concept of making profit on the actual ones to watch card. You're gonna wanna wait a couple days to buy a ones to watch card. Wait at least maybe till the promo's even over. After that first weekend when they play all their games, pick up some ones to watch cards that maybe didn't have a great first game, buy those cards up, sell them the next weekend before their next match and make profit that way. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching a very long episode in the very first episode of Trading to Glory. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video. Check all, all the links down below to my other social medias, including our Discord for the FIFA 21 hype. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.